track day. One track day. Say that, Jay. It's the murder. This fuck. You know. Yo, what the fuck is the deal, world? It's your boy SDJ. Say that, J. I'm back. Episode 17. FUTV, episode 17. We are motherfucking back. You feel me? What up, YouTube world? Shout out to all the new subscribers. Shout out to all the old subscribers. The song I was just listening to is my new single, Bitch So Scandalous. You go download that only at my platform, only at sdjtv.com. Only my platform. Man, S-A-Y-D-A-T-J-A-Y. We in the building. You feel me? Now, for those who are not familiar, I got the FUTV series. You feel me? This is episode 17, current events. Four topics, the last one being battle rap, the third one being old school hip hop, first two current events. So without further ado, let's get into topic number one. We back, yeah, feel me? What? Topic number one is rapper Takashi 69 Daniel Hernandez out of New York City. Uh, young guy, young Hispanic kid, got into the game, got into the music industry with a really, really, really controversial image. I mean, the guy had purple, red, green, yellow hair, tattoos all over his face. He was making a lot of noise. He was beefing. He was dissing niggas. He was dissing ludicrous and dissing all type of niggas that didn't have nothing to do with nothing. He was going city to city dissing niggas and making a whole lot of controversy in 2018. Now, fast forward to 2019, he's facing a whole lot of fucking years for the fucked up way he was moving. Me personally, I'm from Southern California. A lot of his motherfucking stardom, a lot of his motherfucking clout came from when he clout chased off of my motherfucking state, you feel me? So that didn't resonate with me a lot. Uh, I always respected the kid's grind, the kid's hustle, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he did a lot of fuck shit, he did a lot of trolling, and I hope this is a lesson to any kid that think trolling is going to get him into the game. Look at this motherfucker. He didn't... He, he brought down the whole Trey Way. He brought down the whole nine Trey Gangsters. The nine Trey Gangster Bloods has been a steeple in the motherfucking gang banging blood nation of the East Coast for years. This motherfucker then brought down a whole goddamn organization. He told on everybody. He done told on Trippy Red, which is another rapper that I did another blog about because he was fucking on a little girl. But that's another motherfucking case. You can go down the channel and see that shit. But anyway, he done told on a gang of motherfuckers. He telling he on some Nino Brown shit. Everybody must go. Money, my everything must go. If I got to go, I'm taking the whole shit down with me. That's his mentality. And uh, that's something I can't respect. I don't give a fuck if niggas fucked your baby mama. I don't give a fuck if niggas fucked your mama. If you sign up for the streets, if you get put on Snow Billy said on Info Minds that the motherfucker got put on. He got he got an actual put on to the blood gang, you feel me? So once you get a put on, it's no telling. It's no, it's no telling. You go, you do your 40 fucking years, you tell your stories, you come out, you write your books, you feel me? And you live your fucking life, you know? You know what you did to get to where you got. So with that being said, let me know what y'all think about that. Uh, Takashi 69 is currently on trial. He's ratting on everything moving. If you did something, if you wrote a fucking blunt in front of this motherfucker, you better be motherfucking nervous. You get what I mean? Because he's telling on everything moving. And uh, I'm just glad that that shit's way over there. You know, I'm over here. That shit way over there. <laughs> you know, but let me know what y'all think about that. Topic number two. Topic number two. You feel me? Topic two. Topic number two is something I want to speak about. Tyler, the creator, about a week ago. Tyler, the creator, rapper out of Los Angeles, California, I Future, you know what I'm saying? Skateboarding, blind wigs, cockroaches, cricket eating, um, that guy. So anyways, about a week ago, he made a tweet. The tweet was the exact quote, I can't get you, but it was something to the effect of he was thanking his mom. He, he tweeted, thank you, mom, 
he, he took his phone and said, thank you, mom, that I wasn't right, that you didn't move me to Moreno Valley or the IE in 2004 like everyone else because I would have sucked. Now, the problem with that is not only one am I from Moreno Valley. He said Moreno Valley specifically. So that tells that 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 that, that told me a lot. Somebody with so many followers, so much fame, attention to specifically say Moreno Valley, that, that says a lot, you know, and um, that didn't sit so well with a lot of us here in Moreno Valley, especially the artists, you know what I mean? Because it's a lot of motherfuckers from here that put pain in, that put that put their work in, that's actually doing good and thriving in, and, and, and actually putting on for the culture and, and creating culture. And for Tyler, the creator of all people, to say that, I really feel like it's a, it's a, that's the problem with California. You look at these other states, you look at Florida, Miami artists ain't going around talking about the other Florida artists and, 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 and where they're from. Atlanta artists ain't talking about the, the, the making or the, or the, or the, or the Augusta artists. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, the Inland Empire and Los Angeles, I'm not going to say need each other, but we have to coexist in the same place because at the end of the day, it's a lot of motherfuckers from Moreno Valley and the IE that's making things move in a real serious way. So with that being said, Tyler, the creator, definitely made a mistake, in my opinion, by ostracizing basically a whole fucking region. You know what I mean? Because if you do the research, San Bernardino County is a whole lot bigger than what the motherfuck you might imagine. You get what I mean? So well, let me know what y'all think about that. Uh, shout out to my homeboy Faze for, for mopping his ass up. Make sure y'all type that shit in on the internet. FZE, Tyler Creator, his song gonna pop right up. He mopped his ass up. You know what I'm saying? Put on for the motherfucking city. Shout out to that nigga. And uh, let me know what y'all think about that in the comments below. Besides that, let's get into topic number three, man. Fuck it. Topic number three. Recently, recently, Jamie Foxx was casted to play Supreme. Supreme is probably in this picture somewhere. So anyways, Jamie Foxx was supposed to play Supreme. Supreme is a big, I want to say, ex-drug dealer from New York. Supreme is from Queens. Don't quote me on all this shit. But Supreme is from Queens. Supreme was a big drug dealer in the 80s. Long story short, 50 Cent somehow, someway, got into a beef with Supreme. Supreme is big time drug dealer. I'm talking about rapper 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson. So, with that being said, Supreme wind up Fucking with Ja Rule. Now, everybody knows Ja Rule and 50 Cent is like motherfucking Tom and Jerry and shit. You get what I mean? Like, they're like motherfucking cats and dogs. Like, they don't oil and water. 50 Cent and Ja Rule just never got along. Now, with that being said, here recently, like I said in the beginning, Jamie Foxx was supposed to play Supreme on some type of Netflix series. Now, 50 Cent Shut that shit, <laughs> shut that shit down. You know what I mean? Um, him and Irv Gotti actually. Irv Gotti? No, no, no. Irv Gotti was trying to do it. Fifty Cent shut it down along with Bimmy. Now I don't know if Bimmy is in this picture, but Bimmy was a part of the Supreme team. You know what I'm saying? Light skinned cat, and and and, and basically, Bimmy had a part in, in, in getting the motherfucking Netflix series shut down too. Now, this is a whole fucking... See, y'all got to understand, these, these these third topics be some topics. Sometimes I, I, I really got to watch my motherfucking words because you never know who the motherfucker's watching and you never know who the motherfucker's listening and I ain't trying to say too much. But basically, <laughs> basically, 50 Cent was had a hit put out on him by... by by, you know, certain individuals. And they tried to kill 50 Cent's ass, you know. But those certain individuals that tried to kill 50 Cent's ass are still making moves, are trying to make moves today. 
You know what I'm saying? So the question that I pose to my motherfucking followers is, how far does a beef, how long does a beef last? I mean, 50 Cent was shot in the early 2000s. You know what I'm saying? So for him to be stopping niggas' monies in the, in the, in the, and we going into the 2020s, you know, how far, how far does a beef go before, before I wouldn't say it's squashed because they tried to kill him, but how, how far does it really go before you say, you know what, fuck it, 50 Cent allegedly took down a bunch of these motherfuckers, you know, got a bunch of them sent to jail and shit, allegedly, you know, I'm not going to say that's a fact, that's allegedly, you know, so it's like, you sent us to jail, we get out now, we trying to do our thing and you shutting us down. Is that real? I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about that and the whole 50 Cent shutting down Jamie Foxx from playing Supreme and shit. I don't know if everybody know about that, but you know, this is FUTV. You're going to get news over here. You're going to get the exclusive, real hip-hop, raw shit. Topic number four in conclusion, man. Topic number four in conclusion, man. Battle rap. Topic number four is always going to be battle rap. Okay, so... Here recently, they just had uh, a battle rap event, Murder Mook and Calico versus T-Top and Briz, two-on-two. Two. If you're not familiar with battle rap, these four battle rappers, it was a two-on-two. Two. It's two, two MCs versus another two MCs, you feel me? And the two MCs battled it out with words and to see which two had the best battle with words. Now, unfortunately, here recently... As you can see, a fucking punch was thrown, you know? Now, what happened was Murder Mook, one of the battle rappers, recently lost his mom. Now, Murder Mook, if you don't know who Murder Mook is, he's the Michael Jordan of battle rap. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, Murder Mook is the first motherfucking battle rapper a lot of motherfuckers was familiar with because he was on YouTube or the internet back before YouTube, way back in the day, battle rapping. Over no beats. Three rounds, four rounds, five rounds. They used to go a lot of rounds. You know what I mean? But he is looked at as a fucking face of battle rap. One of, one, one, one of the few. Now, he recently just lost his mom a few months ago. And when they, when, when they went to the battle, the two-on-two, -two, him and his partner went second. And... Briz and T-Top, the opponents, disrespected his mom. Not only did they disrespect his mom, they said, fuck his mom. You know what I mean? Now, battle rap is definitely a disrespectful art form. What I mean by that is the goal of battle rap is to degrade your opponent, disrespect your opponent as much as you can. To get a shock factor, to get a wow factor from the crowd. Because at the end of the day, the crowd is what determines the, the, the wins and losses. Because there are no judges in battle rap. There are no commission. There is no commission. There is no, no ranking system. So at the end of the day, the crowd is what determines the winner. To be totally honest with you. Rather it's a crowd watching on YouTube or rather it's a crowd there in the building at the end of the day, the people is what determines the winners. With that being said, how far do you go to get a win? Do you say, fuck someone's dead mom? Now, once he said, fuck the man's dead mom, and mind you, Mook is, a, Mook is somebody I consider as a distant friend. Like, I've always gotten love for Murder Mook. I've, you know what I'm saying? Met him. He's a cool motherfucker, man. Not a, not a dirty nigga from, from what I get out of him. You get what I mean? So, with that being said... Once they said that, he still tried to rap. He said, fuck it, it's battle rap. I'm going to tuck my emotions. I'm going to tuck my feelings. I'm going to do the job that I get paid to do. In the midst of that, Briz, his opponent, grabs him. <laughs> like, 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 he was, he grabs him. Now, one, one, one thing everybody knows in battle rap is when you're rapping, your opponent is supposed to let you rap. Not supposed to do nothing. Some people talk, some people do other things, but you're not supposed to. That's when when a motherfucker is talking during another person round while somebody else is rapping. 
Nine times out of ten, that's a sign that that person who's talking to another man's fine is losing. That's something you do when you lose. Because when you spit your shit and you won and you won that round, it's nothing else for you to say while the other nigga rapping. You feel what I'm saying? So while Mook is rapping with his partner Calico, Briz grabs him. Murder Mook throws a fucking punch. And it's a fucking Royal Rumble. It's just a fucking rumble, Royal fucking Rumble. Everybody's just... It's a fucking... It's a fucking Royal Rumble, man. It's a, it's a fucking Royal Rumble. Niggas is getting elbowed and shit. Niggas get pushed off the stage. All types of shit. All types of shit. Oh, mayhem breaks off. Now, the fucked up part about this is battle rap is actually something that can help a lot of young black people. You know what I'm saying? A, 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 lot, of, a, lot, of, a lot of young... A lot of young minority men get opportunities to go across the fucking world from battle rapping. And I feel like, I feel like this type of shit definitely pushes battle rap back. I am a battle rap fan. I'm a casual battle rap fan. I'm not a hardcore battle rap fan. I can't tell you all the battle rappers, all the battles. But one thing I can say is I hate when motherfuckers fuck up events, I hate it. I hate it because it puts a black eye on the culture. It puts a black eye on everything. You know what I mean? I think I read yesterday somewhere that Murder Mook, the face, has actually been banned from URL, the particular league that's actually the face of leagues of battle rap. So it's like, that's fucked up. Especially from the casual, the casual battle rap fan because it's like, I really just like to watch Martyr Mook. It's only a few guys I like to watch battle. You know what I mean? So it's like, how far do you fucking go to win a battle? You say, fuck the man's dead mom now. I don't even know who the fuck Briz is. You get what I mean? I don't even know who the fuck. I've never seen a motherfucking Briz battle. Never. I don't even know. Briz could walk by me right now. I wouldn't even know who he is. But because of this dude, I can't even see Murder Mook. That fucking sucks, you know. That that, that 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 really fucking sucks, you know. Mook was back. I was I was I was looking forward to seeing Mook, you know, and I won't be able to see Mook no more. And I, I, Brisk walk by me. Brisk walking this motherfucker right now. I wouldn't know who the fuck he was. You know what I mean? <laughs> but let me know what y'all think about that. You know what I'm saying? It's FUTV. I'm back. Say that, Jay. Make sure you go download the new single. Make sure you motherfucking click the Young B documentary. That motherfucker should be popping up on the screen soon. Click the motherfucking documentary. Rest in peace to the big homie. FUTV season three. I'm out this motherfucker, man. Let's get it. One track day. One track day. Say that, Jay. It's the murder.